Hello, gamers and intellectuals, and welcome to the Corner of Truth. Today, our goal is to answer the question, do inscriptions suck? And how are we doing that? Well, I ran every single one of them, so you don't have to. So how do we actually determine whether an inscription is worth it? Well, that's pretty easy, actually. If you could get more loot out of a regular vault than you could out of two inscription runes, it's definitely not worth it. And so with a few exceptions, every single inscription run I did had two inscriptions on it, so two rooms, and I ran a control vault, which is just a regular vault alongside the inscriptions, and every vault I ran had five times the relevant modifier because you really shouldn't run an inscription vault if you don't have catalysts. I ran each vault for as long as I could to the best of my ability with some very, very good loot so I could take care of the mobs pretty easily. And in addition, I did not include any negative modifiers because negative modifiers are random. I wanted to get the absolute most consistent results, which is, of course, the room, and the positive modifiers. That being said, I will take into account the possible effect of the negative modifiers when ranking inscriptions. And one last thing, all the inscription runs had 14 minutes and 37 seconds on them, because I feel like that's about an average time you can get. For now, I say let's jump right into it, starting with the Gilded Chests. Gilded Chests are very unique, as they're the only chest in the game so far as of Update 8, that have two challenge rooms, which are the Wild West rooms and the Village rooms, and their Omega room is the library, the lovely, lovely library. My control vault went pretty well, actually. It was just a regular vault, of course, but we got really lucky, and I felt pretty lucky. And of course, that's one big benefit of the regular vaults, of the non-architect vaults. You can get lucky, though you could also get unlucky. And we ran away with 167 gilded chests, which is an extremely difficult number to beat. Which did not make me particularly hopeful for the Wild West Room. If you've done the Wild West Room, you know they're annoying, they're full of TNT, there's mobs everywhere, and it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of chests. And all of those problems came in twofold when doing an inscription run. There were more gilded chests. The Cascading Gilded helped a lot, but the mobs were frustrating. The TNT was annoying. I lost a lot of chests to blowing stuff up from random misclicks or even mobs walking on the random pressure plates that are all over the place for some reason. The tight spaces restrict the amount of POIs that you actually have and the number of chests in them. And after two Wild West rooms that I eluded fully, we got 97. 97 is abysmal. Just, just horrible. So... Big, big loss for the inscription runs. However, next up on the chopping block was the village room, which did recently get a rework, so I was feeling pretty hopeful. Now, the village room is an interesting catch case. I put four village rooms onto this crystal because the village room is a 50-50 shot of being a living village room, the daytime one, or a gilded village room, the nighttime one. Now, if more than two of the village rooms were gilded, I would only loot two because I want to keep everything consistent. And we got lucky our first one was gilded and dove right into it. And immediately you can see from this hunter, there are way more chests than a Wild West room. And they're a lot more pleasurable to go through. Silverfish are a non-issue. The mobs are fewer and more far between, a lot more manageable. Nothing's blowing up. And it's not that hard to find your way out of the rooms because you could just mark your way. I like to mark with a block on the right as I am going through because then I know the pathway where the blocks are on the left is my way out. And you can see there's a lot more chests. There's larger POIs. There's way more chests connected to each other. Vein Miner is a lot more useful. It's more satisfying and just overall way more fun and full of chests than the Wild West room. Now, unfortunately, we were struck with bad luck and that was one of four rooms was gilded. The other three were living. However, even so, we came up with 119 gilded chests, meaning if we had gotten two, we could have gotten out with around 238, which is a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of gilded chests, which would have made the village room incredible, 
but we still got unlucky, meaning if all you wanted was gilded chests, you just wasted three inscriptions. Coming up next for gilded is the library room, kind of like the place that I'm sitting in right now. Now, as far as visuals, the library room is 10 out of 10. As far as chests, uh, well, the library room suffers from the fact that most of its POIs are just one chest normally, and some of them don't even cascade. So there's a lot of just me mining singular chests, and it's almost an unmodified library room, which is extremely unfortunate because it's an Omega room, and I'm quote unquote in this case spending five catalysts on it. I feel like I should see more of a return on my investment. It's also tedious to loot, but there's a lot of really pretty visuals, so it kind of balances out in that regard. And unfortunately, after completely looting two, two Omega rooms, 126 chests, barely more than what we got from one village room, just, just sad. Okay, well, so far we have regular vaults 1, inscriptions 0.5, the half point is for the possibility of a lot from a village room, maybe ornates will do better. And they definitely had a better shot. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I've always noticed that our Nate POIs feel smaller than the other ones, but once again, that could just be me. But we didn't get as lucky with our ornate run as we did with our Gilded run, and came away with 129. That being said, that's still more chest total than two library rooms, so ultimately, once again, regular vaults are looking really good over inscription ones. Let's see if Xmark rooms, the ornate challenge room, can pull through. Well, these rooms are ones that can fail, so of course I put four. If two of them were good, we would leave, you know, same deal. And two of them were good, which was great. But immediately I noticed there are not that many ornate chests in the bottom of an Xmark room. And it also didn't seem to be as affected by cascading as I thought it would be. And after feeling pretty lackluster after looting two of them, I left the vault and... 96. Somehow worse than the Wild West rooms. Only by one, but like, come on. They get points because it's kind of fun, the will it, won't it, except for the fact that there's a bug in the game where you know if it's good or not by the minimap, but, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there, I guess. Alright, well, I always love the blacksmith rooms, they're very pretty, and it always feels full of chests, so hopefully the ornate Omega room does a lot better than the gilded one. But instantaneously, I noticed again a similar problem. The ornate POIs in the Omega room are pretty small. They're usually one or two chests in cascading. It doesn't affect them as much because they're embedded in the walls. However, in the lower layers, there's bigger POIs with more floor space. And the blacksmith room is a lot more compact than the library room. So there's a bit of a, you know, kinder looting experience. And of course, it looks very fun. However, after two of them, we only pulled away with 161, which is better than our ornate control. However, if we had just gotten lucky on our ornate control, like we did in our gilded, we would have gotten more. We got 167 on the gilded control, which is more than 161. So with a little bit of luck, and without any of the resources required for an Omega Room, which costs Echo Gems, we would have gotten more. So, eh? Blacksmith Room, eh? Which we also needed two of, by the way. Two blacksmith rooms kind of beat one regular vault. I will say it's a lot less time spent, and of course it's a lot safer because it's no mega room, there's no mob, so take that into your consideration. But still, I wanted to see more chests out of, you know, Omega room. Alright, alright. I've been critical, I've been negative, and maybe the living chests were going to soften this cold heart. And I'll tell you what, the control vault did not really make me think otherwise. It went phenomenally. Living POIs are bigger. There's just larger POIs. And uh, yeah, 183. 183 living chests. We got very lucky. Uh, almost 20 more than our gilded one. So I'm imagining 183 is probably the higher tier of luck for the special chests. So I was not feeling confident that the village room which is the only challenge room for the living ones, would stun me or blow me away, it proved me wrong. We did get two. 
they were the daytime ones and they were so chock full of living chests once again just a lovely looting experience and yeah 218 living chests which is about you know what we'd expected to get if we got two of the gilded ones so great we learned that village rooms are consistent and they have a ton of chests they're not difficult to loot the mobs are a non-issue that one definitely takes the cake especially because it's a challenge room so it is cheaper than omega rooms to create the inscription pretty nice next up was the mushroom my favorite one to look at the mushroom has burned me before in my single player series i know it's not that good but i'm willing to give it a second chance and uh yeah they're pretty okay but once again all three of the omega rooms suffer from one chest pois cascading is worthless catalysts don't do much to these there were more okay don't get me wrong there were more but there wasn't an omega amount of chests and we walked away with 107 which is only 10 more than the wild west room what what two omega rooms is 10 chests better than the worst challenge room in the game are you kidding me yeah that that did not impress me at all so far inscriptions are not taking the lead but i figured maybe pivoting away from chests and into coins and i'd get a little more impressed and don't worry i haven't forgot about wooden chests they're just my favorite so i wanted to save them till later so for my coin run the control went a lot better than i thought it would i actually wasn't very excited i thought it'd be a bit of a boring one but no the cascading on coins the wealthy modifier does numbers to the coin things it's very satisfying they sound nice and it was just a regular vault that we came with 884 coin stack mines that was a lot more than I thought it would be. The challenge room, however, I was very excited for because the dragon room is really good. I know it's really good. I've ran them before. Everyone who runs them thinks the dragon room is good because they are good. So I was pretty excited to see. Now you'll notice as I'm going into this, I'm not doing any of the cheese strategies. No infinite water bucket and no pick a ringing a hole for mobs to fall into and fill up the mob cap. I didn't want to do these with cheese and the infinite water bucket is going to be patched as of update nine. I wanted to take this as objectively as I could, and I was surprised to find that the mobs were kind of a non-issue. Yes, I had really good armor and a decent heal, but ultimately, they would all try to follow you in a single file line, so you could almost ring around the rosy them behind the dragon, and they'd get a little stuck. Then the rest of the room was just running around and picking up as many coins as he wanted while holding down the vein miner key. It was really fun. It, it felt a little chaotic but the stakes were there, but not too high. I liked it a lot. It was an enjoyable looting experience, and we came away with an astounding 2,189 from two Dragon Rooms. Ridiculous numbers. Ridiculous numbers. I was beyond thrilled. The Dragon Room, that did not suck. Next up was the Cove, which I was cautiously optimistic for. I'd done a Cove before, but not very seriously. I hadn't really looted it much. And as I jumped into it, uh, look, there were a lot of coins. The problem is the way they're laid out. There's always one block gaps between them. They're underwater. They're under slabs. You kind of have to break through things. They're really sporadic. It's hard to vein mine them. The looting experience is really tedious and it gets boring quickly as everything kind of blends into each other the coins blend into the ground you lose the little stacks so if you have hunter equipped you kind of can't see because of all the particles it, it, the looting experience wasn't phenomenal though the room looks amazing and after two of them i got 1624 which is pretty good but a lot worse than the challenge room once again this is an omega room i kind of expected to be omega loot and I guess I'd understand the idea of like, oh, you know, a challenge room is challenging, so you get more loot. But it's a little sporadic as to whether that's the case or not. In any case, the cove was a decent thing. Just the looting experience was not fun. And next up, oh, my beloved. Oh, the wooden chests. I knew this was going to be fun because wooden chests are everywhere in a regular vault and everywhere they were. With even just five times, they were oozing out of the wall i mean it was wooden mageddon it was phenomenal vein miner everywhere pois up the wazoo it was absolutely lovely my inventory was flooding with loot it was a huge blast and um i even had to command out of the vault <laughs> because i took too long 
So I suppose it's not technically that legitimate of a run, but if you had brought in a little bit of fruit, which you should always do, you would have been able to make the time. I would have been able to make the time. I was lazy and didn't bring fruit in and got 464 chests, but let's dock 40 for dying too early and call it 424, which is still an obscene amount of chests. Just a ridiculous amount of wooden chests, and I knew in my heart of heart that the dig site would never beat it. And oh, the dig site. For one, I don't even know if the modifiers actually worked on it because all the chests are underground. There was a few chests that popped up above the ground, but I had no way of telling. And oh, it's so tedious and boring and unfun to loot. There's blocks falling all over the place. You gotta vein mine the sand or whatever. It lags your game. It's not fun. It's annoying. It's just, the dig site is just annoying. And after looting two of them, I came away with 322, which is 100 less than like our docked points version of the regular vault. So just dig sites, bleh, 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 bleh. Oh, but last and certainly not least, ores. I was very excited for ores because so far the inscriptions in Omega Rooms and even Challenge Rooms hadn't been impressing me as much as I hoped they would. But everyone knows that a mine room is king of all rooms. Right? At this point I was feeling nervous. Time and time again I'd been proven that Omega Rooms just aren't that Omega. But we'll see. For starters, the Control Vault. The control vault was boring. I didn't like it. I was mostly just running around looking for the ore POIs. It took forever. It's run from the room, run from the room, run from the room. They really need to add Hunter for ores because it's not viable to look for an ore POI. You're kind of wasting your time. You want to look for the ore common rooms. But when I did, boy, oh boy, did we come away with some loot. 221 individual ores. And look at them. Nearly a stack and a half of Laramar, well above a half stack of Benyatite, 23 Painite, 22 Wooderdai and Alexandrite, and 12 Black Opal. That was surprising to me. That's a lot of Black Opal for just kind of a regular vault. And the handful of Pog Gems were kind of a non-reward, but still really, really, really good. And I was feeling nervous, but a little more confident, because everyone knows a mine room's pretty good. However, I'd never really given a lot of thought to Crystal Caves before. Maybe they were the unsung hero, as Crystal Caves can't spawn Laramar. They're meant to focus on the other gem ores, so I was very interested. The actual process of going through a Crystal Cave is quite pleasurable. I like it. I think it's fun. It's a little challenging, you know, like a challenge room. You gotta fight the mobs while the spawner exhausts, and overall it was pretty fun. Although, I felt like the Plentiful didn't affect it in the way that I wanted it to. There seemed to still be such a limited amount of ores, and I was growing increasingly worried that crystal caves were too restrictive. And unfortunately, I think they were, as we got less, we got 212. Not a lot less, but still, from two challenge rooms, or challenge rooms, especially the crystal caves, you'd have thought we got more ores, but perhaps it was balanced out, right? Almost 100 ores in the last vault were Laramar. So, how was that made up for? Eh. Eh. Almost a stack of Banyatites, nice. 41 Painites, pretty good. 35 Rudai, 29 Alexandrite. Still 12 Black Opal, so I guess we just got lucky in the control or unlucky in the inscription. And the Pog Gems were a lot better, but honestly, the trade off of not getting 100 Laramar, which maybe you don't need, I don't know. It was better for the other ores but it really didn't impress me. And I definitely began to have second thoughts about the mine room. Maybe I misremembered. Maybe I was blinded by 116. Are mine rooms that good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine rooms are phenomenal. I, I'm not even gonna get this bit up. Oh, it was everywhere. Ores were everywhere. I had a single hammer size and I couldn't even get through one mine room. And uh, that was fine because we got 662. A 400 lead on the regular vault. Insanity. Look at that. The Crystal Cave was supposed to be, you know, the better one for the other ores. Uh, no, it's a mine room. Just run mine rooms. Don't run crystal rooms. You even get your investment back. All that Laramar will absolutely turn into the Laramar you put into it. 
almost two stacks of Penny Knights, a stack and a half of Pain Knight, to give or take, a stack of Wooded Eye, half a stack of Legend Drive, 28 Black Opal, every single Pog Ore, and two Echo Ore, which could potentially give you the eight Echo Gems you spend back. The Mine Room was phenomenal. I love the Mine Room with my heart and soul. Mwah. Thank you, Mine Room. Mwah, 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 mwah. You restore my faith. And even after all that, I can't yet tell you whether they suck or not. Because I would like to say that yes, most of them suck, except for the Dragon Room and the Mine Room. But I can't. Because of one glaring problem. Recipes. The recipes for inscriptions. Most of them are fine. In fact, some of them are amazing. Take the Village Room. Actually, it's pretty cheap. But the Dragon Room? requires 32 bounty pearls, not gold, not platinum, bounty pearls, which have nothing to do with dragons or coins. And bounty pearls are so rare that in the 750 whatever wooden chests I mined in the preparation for this video, I didn't even find 16. What? You want me to fork over 32 bounty pearls, which are apparently the rarest thing on the planet? I mean, how many extra wooden vaults do you think that is to just run one dragon room, let alone two? That is ridiculous, and it's just such an F-tier recipe for an S-tier room that I can't consider it S-tier because when are you ever going to be able to run it? And in addition, with 32 bounty rules, you could probably get close to the amount of gold and you get extra rewards like vault diamonds, netherite, and gear, so the bounty pearls are more worthwhile as bounty pearls than they are as a dragon room. And dragon rooms aside, let's talk about ornate chests. The biggest reason I could imagine you running a lot of ornate chests is to find vault gear or to find carbon. Well, guess what? You don't get that much vault gear because it's a really rare drop from chests, and you get more carbon from wooden chests. Way more carbon, like 300, 400 more carbon from wooden chests, which you could then just craft into Vault Gear by turning it into chromatic steel, and craft that into Vault Alloy, and craft that into Vault Gear. It's more consistent, and you get a ton more of it. So, the only reason I could imagine running ornate chests is for focuses, which is a legitimate reason, but if you want gear or carbon, <laughs> just run wooden chests. So, ornate is just out the window all the way. And although the village room is really, really good, there's a 50% chance that your village inscription is kind of wasted unless you somehow manage to put an equal amount of living and gilded catalysts and have a ton of time. But the problem with putting a lot of catalysts is something I haven't even talked about. Instability. The image I am putting on screen right now is real. I didn't edit it. I didn't command this in. This is not cheats, this is actually what happened to me while preparing for this video. A 1% unmodifiable. That is a 0.25% chance of happening, and while I understand that is rare, it happened. And it happens to a ton of people. I can never get more than six catalysts on an inscription run with even one room, let alone two. Instability is extremely unforgiving, and then extremely overpowered sometimes. There needs to be a minimum percentage of instability that a crystal can exhaust at. I see people getting 15 catalysts on two rooms. I can't even get seven. It's ridiculous. It makes an inscription worthless when it exhausts with only one catalyst. Something that has happened to me and many others before. That needs to happen. So, to answer the question, do inscriptions suck? Yes. Unless it doesn't become unmodifiable, is 50% of village rooms or 100% of mine rooms. Then it doesn't suck. Otherwise, I would just save the resources.